Good day, everybody. It's Andrew here, and welcome back to my channel. We've got some big updates on the next stimulus package and social security changes as well, as Mitch McConnell has agreed to something that's going to have massive impacts on both of these issues. Now, a lot of experts are saying that as Mitch McConnell becomes more agreeable, we have a much bigger chance of getting increased social security benefits and stimulus checks for seniors. So let's discuss the details, but before we jump into it, do me a quick favor, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and share this channel with anyone who you think might find this helpful. This is a community for seniors, and my job here is to be a voice for you and make sure that President Biden keeps his promises to increase social security benefits, increase SSI and SSDI and VA benefits as well, and even approve a stimulus check specifically for seniors to try and help you until all of these benefits are permanently increased. So with that said, thank you so much for being a part of our community. And if you really want to support my work, subscribe to my second channel. The link to that is going to be in the comments of this video. And that channel is going to have some updates as well. But it's mostly going to be an entertainment channel, a community where we're going to play games together. I'm going to be on camera with a live chat. You can chat with me, chat with the community. We're going to play games like bingo, casino games, slots, announce lottery winning numbers. And I'm going to give stimulus checks away there as well. So I'm going to be giving away stimulus checks just as a thank you for supporting my work. And it's probably going to be once a week at first and then eventually hopefully more depending on how big the channel gets. So with that said, thank you for your support. Again, the link to that is going to be in the comments of this video. And let's jump right into today's updates. So we're going to talk about Mitch McConnell, what he just agreed to that's going to have massive impacts on the next stimulus package. But first, let's do a quick update on daily trending news. Now, one thing that's making headlines is the fact that Donald Trump said he actually liked Barack Obama after all these years of attacking him. So Donald Trump said that he liked, quote unquote, smart and sharp Barack Obama after years of insults feuding, says this report. So a lot of people were surprised by this, and Donald Trump was in front of a crowd, and as soon as Barack Obama's name was mentioned, he was getting boos like crazy. Obviously, Trump supporters generally don't like Barack Obama, but let me know in the comments what you guys think. In any case, Trump went on to say he liked Barack Obama, he's smart, he's sharp, but he also blamed him for creating a strong divide in Congress. So all of these, all this divisiveness that we see, a lot of people blame Trump for it, for creating, for creating kind of this strong vitriol, this divide between left and right and Democrats and Republicans. But Trump actually blames this on Barack Obama, saying that he's the one that started this divide. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. I try and stay out of these issues, but they're trending news. So I like to share them with you and see what you guys think about it. Now, also trending, the government deficit is actually doing well this year, and it's down 17% from a year ago. So the deficit means how much money are we making as a government and how much money are we spending? Now, a deficit generally is not a good thing. That means that we're spending more than we're making. But this has been going on for about 20 years. But the good news right now is that the deficit is actually smaller than it was last year. And this makes sense because last year the economy shut down. Now people are going back to work, meaning we have more people making money, more people paying taxes into the system. And the deficit is actually down 17% compared to a year ago. Now, the reason this is good news is the less of a deficit we have, the better chances we have of getting more stimulus checks and getting social security benefits increased. Because the smaller the deficit is, the better of an economic situation the government is in, meaning they're in a better position to actually expand these benefits, if that kind of makes sense. So generally, things are heading in the right direction. As the economy is booming, generally this means more revenue coming in, and that provides more money to spend on programs like social security benefits and stimulus checks for seniors. Now, at the same time, President Biden's approval ratings are tanking. We've talked about this a lot on this channel, that Democrats think one of the best things they can do to turn things around as far as polls is to approve stimulus checks for seniors. 
One, because they've seen that stimulus checks work in regards to increasing poll numbers. And two, because seniors are one of the largest, no, they're actually the largest group when it comes to voting. Seniors vote more than any other age bracket in this country. So approving stimulus check for seniors not only makes sense because they need the help the most, but also makes sense because it would help Democrats the most in regards to fixing the polls and trying to maintain control of both the House and the Senate in 2022. A lot of experts are predicting a quote-unquote red wave, meaning Democrats could lose tons of seats in both chambers, the House and the Senate, which would leave President Biden as a sitting duck for his last two years in office. And generally, when a president becomes a sitting duck, nothing gets done, no more stimulus, no Social Security benefit increases, and then a lot of times that president ends up losing when he goes up for re-election. A lot of experts think this stimulus check for seniors will happen because Democrats need this help to turn these polls around. So, folks, let's jump into stimulus, Social Security benefits, what's going on with Mitch McConnell, what he just agreed to that looks like a good sign when it comes to getting all of these things done. Well, first of all, we've talked about the fact that Democrats are trying to do the stimulus package. Bernie Sanders is trying to include a stimulus check for seniors. And all of this is happening as at the same time, Democrats have been trying to raise the debt ceiling so they don't default on their debts, basically like raising their credit limit to pay things they already owe that were previously approved. approved. Also trying to extend government funding to avoid a government shutdown. All of these things happening at once. And the, the entire time, Mitch McConnell has said, we're not helping Democrats with anything until they promise to not do any more stimulus, to not increase Social Security benefits. We're not doing any of this because Democrats need our help to get it done. Democrats can't do it without a single Republican vote like they're doing the stimulus package. As time has gone on, Mitch McConnell has been agreeing more and more with Democrats. So first of all, obviously he agreed to approve the physical stimulus plan, what they're calling the BIF, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Package. Now he agreed to that, and that was something that took place a few weeks ago and has been fully approved. Then he agreed to fund the government until the middle of February. That's another thing that got done. They're gonna have to address it again in February, but that's twice he agreed to help Democrats extend government funding to avoid a government shutdown. Now he's agreed to help Democrats actually increase the debt ceiling by doing kind of a weird workaround situation where they approve a new law that allows Democrats temporarily to do it without a single Republican vote. Now the point I'm trying to make here is that as time goes on, Mitch McConnell continues to agree with more and more things that Democrats want to do. Now he does do it in a certain way that makes sure that for the most part, Republicans are avoid, avoiding voting for it, right? Like, for example, the debt ceiling. Republicans aren't actually going to vote to raise the debt ceiling, but they're going to vote to create a new law, which temporary, temporarily will allow Democrats to raise the debt ceiling on their own. So it's indirectly doing the same thing. Obviously, it's political theater. That way, next year, when the elections come up, Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell can say, hey, we didn't vote for any of this, but obviously they voted to let Democrats do it, right? So the point I'm making here is that as time goes on, all of these issues, the physical stimulus plan, Mitch McConnell voted with Democrats to get it done. Raising the debt ceiling, Mitch McConnell has agreed to help Democrats get it done. Extending government funding, Mitch McConnell voted to get it done and got enough Republicans on board to get it fully approved. So all of these things are pointing to the fact that maybe, just maybe, Mitch McConnell is becoming more agreeable with Democrats and is going to allow them to approve the next stimulus package, which, first of all, Democrats don't really need any Republican votes for that stimulus package, but they need to get moderate Democrats like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema on board, which, of course, they work with Mitch McConnell as well. Then we have the fact that Mitch McConnell has said he doesn't want to raise Social Security benefits either, but the fact that he keeps becoming more agreeable makes us think, hey... Maybe Mitch McConnell will help Democrats raise Social Security benefits next year as well. Now, when it comes to raising Social Security benefits, the process is a little more complicated 
than doing a stimulus package. Although Democrats could try and include it in the next stimulus package next year, some experts say that because of something called the bird rule, which is just a technicality, that they wouldn't be able to include it in a stimulus package, and they would have to do it with Republicans requiring 60 votes to get it fully approved. Now, the jury is still out on that situation. Maybe they could get it done in the stimulus package, or maybe Mitch McConnell would help them vote to approve a temporary law to do it with only 50 votes, just like they did the debt ceiling, right? This is a new tool that Democrats could use to increase Social Security benefits as well, just like they're going to do with increasing the debt ceiling. Kind of confusing, but I hope that kind of makes sense. Bottom line here is that Mitch McConnell is agreeing with so much of the things that Democrats want to do, and this is a really good sign moving forward as Democrats are trying to increase Social Security benefits and approve stimulus checks for seniors in this next stimulus package. So as Democrats continue to negotiate the next stimulus package, please subscribe. I will keep you updated as things develop. We should have a lot of updates in the next couple of days as Chuck Schumer is pushing to get the stimulus package done by Christmas, although Joe Manchin says he might try and pump the brakes on the situation. So please subscribe. I will keep you updated as things develop. Now, as far as Mitch McConnell, this clip does a really good job of explaining what's going on with Mitch McConnell and the fact that he continues to put his foot down and then say, oh, I'm not going to do something, but then ends up helping Democrats anyway. Now, full disclosure here, this is MSNBC, which tends to be a little bit liberal and kind of goes harsh on Mitch McConnell. So if you vote Republican, this might kind of upset you a little bit. But the point the video makes is that Mitch McConnell continues to help Democrats get things done and is becoming more and more agreeable when it comes to approving more stimulus, either in the form of physical stimulus, the next stimulus package, increasing checks in funding for the government, and increasing the debt ceiling as well, which overall is a good sign moving forward when it comes to stimulus and it comes to increasing Social Security benefits. So if you'd like to stick around, let's watch this clip. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next video. Some policy news you might have missed with political implications. Mitch McConnell just folded again in a stare down with Democrats, which kind of knocks a talking point we've heard a lot from D.C. pundits. Now, Biden's pushing towards another spending win in as many months, and he's pushing that jobs bill. The big obstructionist opponent on a lot of this has been McConnell. He says he's the Grim Reaper, and his obstruction tactics are often discussed in D.C. Mitch McConnell is a super, you know, he's a super smart, uh, you know, tactician. He is just constantly a strategic tactician. It's always what he'll, he'll be known for. I don't ever question McConnell. I mean, I worked with him. You don't want to mess with McConnell. A Republican explaining you don't want to mess with him. Fox News cheering on the tactics and an independent analyst, a D.C. type, saying this is what he does. And he has certainly had some wins. We've covered them. But not every narrative lasts forever. And Democrats have been increasingly messing with McConnell. In September, he was vowing a big fight over the debt. He said Republicans would simply not help Democrats avoid default. And he said he was willing to court crisis, start a global financial meltdown if need be. Legislation that raises the debt limit. They will not get Senate Republicans help with raising the debt limit. Fact check, false. Democrats got help from Republicans. You see here, McConnell blinked. Then many on the Republican right were upset. Trump said McConnell folded. And McConnell rushed then, this is what's so interesting about what's happening this week. He said, oh, well, okay, I won't do it again and told Biden that when it came time to avoiding the next default, he would do nothing to help Democrats. I will not provide such assistance again. Well, that's not true. The tactician doubled down on something and then again blinked, caving in this standoff over the relatively arcane issue of funding the government through the debt ceiling. McConnell and 13 other Republicans are going to raise it, supporting what Biden wanted without getting any concessions in return, which is the normal course, by the way. You're not supposed to get concessions just for not taking hostages. Here's how one independent outlet put it. McConnell blinked on the debt limit, saying he would never help the Democrats, and he just did twice. McConnell blinking. 
Senate Republicans have lost other fights to Biden as well, including infrastructure, where McConnell, after vowing 100 percent opposition, voted with Biden and some aspects of COVID relief. So one of the things you have to do in life and certainly in objective news reporting is put narratives aside. And if they're from the Beltway, probably put them far to the side and just follow what's actually happening in real time. The rep, the narrative, the hype about Mitch McConnell is that he knows his tactics, and especially if it's about arcane legislative stuff, he will win in the end. He'll certainly stick to his guns. He has done neither, which reminds us of something Thomas Jefferson famously said, don't believe the hype.